A month is a long time these days in Armenian politics, long enough for the last president to finish his term in office and take most of his considerable powers to the prime minister's office, long enough for angry crowds and protesters to gather and force him out. And now the man who led those protests has taken his place as well. My guest this week here in Yerevan is Armen Ashotyan, Vice President of the Republican Party that's ruled Armenia for the last 10 years. Will he and his colleagues now accept defeat or will they make trouble for the new leaders? Armen Ashotyan. Welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you for the invitation. Pleasure to meet you. Your party's been in power for so many years. How did you fail so spectacularly to understand how unpopular you'd all become? Nice question. Very provocative and nice question. I like the way you pose. Is there a nice answer? Uh, you, I'm going to be as frank as we, we try to be always. Uh, you know, uh, the phenomenon of Armenian revolutionary movement should be investigated and studied, I think, for a long time because it was really very interesting to follow the people to track their activity. But all you had uh, to do was look at the opinion polls, didn't you? The opinion uh, you know, polls. You know, I have my own explanation. Maybe it's too early to make a final conclusions, but uh, as far as I understood the processes, uh, the phenomena is quite common and general. In 21st century post-industrial world, we should uh, deliver, we, I mean politicians, we should deliver properly what we are going to do and what we are going which, to which, say. Which you didn't. According uh, to a survey last know, year by know. the Caucasus Barometer, 65% of Armenians either completely distrusted political parties here or leaned towards distrusting them. Another, another poll said only a quarter of the population was satisfied with the level of democracy here. That's quite an indictment Mr. of Mr. your Sebastian, party after you really, 10 years. Do you really think that if the level of democracy wasn't in compliance with the European standards or the, the threshold to enter European political families, we could do it? I think even You could do what? I, enter I the could, European could, political family? You I haven't could. entered them yet. You've had no, an no, agreement. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it so on several levels. So let me come back later. Just uh, I will answer the question you posed for the very beginning. Uh, I think this phenomenon is quite general. When you follow the political developments in your countries, in Germany, for example. Look, we're look, talking. We're talking about yours. We're talking about yours. You you impress me by your impatience, but let me let me finish, please. Uh, the the general movement is that the politicians and the population in all countries uh, are divided and uh, by, by the gap. I think the level of inconfidence, the level of fatigue, uh, the level of impatience is quite common in general countries. Mr. So I think that uh, in European countries with the more stable democratic institutions, it was very clear that this mistrust fatigue and miscommunications on behalf of political elite led to the rise of the ultra parties in all countries, in your country as well, in France, in Netherlands, in Germany, in Armenia where the democratic institutions were not so strong, it came to another manifestation. All right, Mr. And I think we should consider that it was really anti-establishment movement. Your Republican view, Party of Armenia, but if I can just say my question, your view <laughs> okay. now of all these events of the last few weeks is that they're a sign of democracy. The president said, standing down, for instance, you said this was the action of a national figure, a strong and patriotic person, keeping Armenia safe from shocks, peace exactly. and wisdom exactly. to all of us. No but doubt. he didn't have a choice, did he? He was forced out of office. Uh, I think it's not very honest opinion. If you treat the decision of politicians like this, you would put them on the corner next time. What we want in Armenia, we as a Republican Party of Armenia, we want it at that time uh, to show to the population, to the people, that we finally heard their voices. It was very important. The you resignation, let it get to this the stage. resignation. The people humiliated you me, the on the streets. The they humiliated your the, president. The resignation of the president was a really act of non-violence policy. He, we tried to follow up for many years, 
And the second, we, uh, you know, the security is always prevailing for Armenians and in Armenia. The security phenomena for the people living during 4,000 years here in very unstable and volatile region, undergone many wars and invasions, it, it's question number one. And we didn't want to put at risk the question of Armenian security as a state. Well, so you can the two reasons, you can the two reasons, that you the can two main, spin it that the two way, main Mr. reasons Ashotian. behind. You can spin it that Excuse way. Me, two main but reasons. the events tell a different story. No, the events, the just events coming, tell a different the, story. The events just coming to prove that the logic behind the decision of Republican Party uh, leadership is the same. Population, the people of Armenia, if they want another way to go out, we are ready to create the environment for that. Let's we just take ready. a look and at the, the second, timeline the over second, the next two, the over the last two days. And the security issue. So the people's opinion and security okay. prevailing. Let's just take and a I look. Think, I think it's Let's not, just take it's a not look. very uh, a nice way of considering these decisions like you tried to summarize some uh, opponents opinion, I guess. Let's take a look personal. back at some of the events Let's over go. the last few days. April 16th, your president, Serge Sargisyan, was nominated for the prime minister's position. He accepted it. And in doing so, he broke a promise that he had made in 2014. Specifically, he wouldn't try to hold on to power as prime minister or speaker. He broke that promise. So you're a party that doesn't keep its promises. Let's you? Uh, let's consider it in no such emotional way as you propose. First of it's all, factual way. it's not emotional. Let me answer. It's if factual. you want, if you want, you can go alone. So Please. If yes, if not, if Please. you want to hear more opinion, uh, if you want to uh, respect the pluralism, if you want to respect the freedom of expression, you should give a chance. Mr. Ashotian, okay. please answer. Answer. Let me. Okay. So first, we explained at that time our political decision. The main reason standing behind of this decision to nominate Serge Sargsyan as a uh, prime minister, as a candidate for the prime minister, was a security issue and Nagorno-Karabakh conflict negotiations. Because he was considered as the only man who is bearing institutional memory in mind and being a patriotic and the part of this deliberation war in early uh, 19th and uh, end of the 18th uh, could promote Armenian national interest during this negotiation. And the second, uh, according to the constitutional mechanism, the ruling party won elections in 2017, is, uh, has, has right to nominate any candidate. So this is a constitution which is so much uh, uh, respected by all democratic countries, and I do hope that Armenia is not an exception. He still, he still broke his promise. On, on April the 17th, when he took the job, the number of protesters in the streets kept on rising. And when you decided to try and discourage the protest by having the police rough up and detain some of the activists, tens of thousands let's, of people came onto the streets. Let's say very they? honestly that this uh, revolution wasn't accompanied by the violence so much. So for Not so much, but there was violence. Me, you there can't was. avoid any kind of clashes if you have tens of thousands of people on one side of the movement and you have a thousand people on the other side, police for the moment. The international they, community was worried, <coughs> was worried. They warned but you to respect time, the rights of the excuse protesters. Excuse me, at that time we got a congratulations from the Euro Commissioner, uh, head of European Commission, Mr. Juncker, and European Council President, Mr. Tusk, just to remind you. The Organization if, if, if for not, Security and Cooperation in Europe warned over the reported instances of disproportionate sure. use of force by Armenian we police also against consider, peaceful we demonstrators. Also, we should also keep in mind that at that time we had also the storming of the state buildings, state institutional buildings and the state of uh, public radio and uh, ministry. So you should always be very frank to consider the situation and very open-minded. Mr. Ashotian, by yes. April the 22nd, Mr. Sarkisian was clinging to power. The demonstrations had risen. The last thing on his mind on that day, the 22nd, was actually standing down. He had discussions with the opposition leader, Nikol Pashinyan, which he broke off after just a few minutes, accusing him of issuing ultimatums and blackmailing 
the legitimate authorities. By the way, the blackmailing and intolerance is still going on in Armenia. Uh, we, after the war, by against, who? By you or by uh, the? By uh, us. Have you found any evidence that it's going by us? This kind of intolerance and blackmailing is not promoting democracy in Armenia because, despite the movement has thousands of supporters, the rights of the freedom of expression for the opponents and for the people who are thinking in other way should be preserved and guaranteed. But did on, not, the, on that did day, not, did not on that day, you day had the leader, you had you the leader of the opposition excuse arrested. Me, excuse me, he was arrested for 24 you, hours. Do, do, do you should differ the days for democracy? You differ it. It's only for Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays. You he can was have arrested democracy. in was violation of his parliamentary. He was detained for immunity. several hours, and after just for to remind you that the next, uh, the next acting prime minister, Mr. Karen Karapetyan, went to deliberate them. Just to remind you, so uh, the question of the democracy is not only the question of the majority, but also the question of the protecting rights of the people who are thinking in another way. I you think violated Nikol Pashinyan's parliamentary immunity by detaining him. It's not right. For the That's what no, he says. That's right. what the no, opposition no. says. He is far from this stipulation. Just here, his recent assessment about developments, he was catched up and there was no special sitting for the parliament who was discussing the the immunization of the Mr. Pashinyan's parliamentary status. It's not true. And then, it's not true. And then on April the 23rd came the sudden change of mind from your new prime minister. I got it wrong, he said. And Mr. Pashinyan was released. Just like that, from one day to the next, from the 22nd to the 23rd. Who whispered in his ear that night and told him the game was over? Who whispered? Very nice question. So you? if you want to cling your s position to the conspiracy, you can continue to uh, stipulate in this way. But he was clinging to power for all those let days me, and then overnight you. Coming back to the, to the meeting between the former prime minister and leader of opposition, we are from Germany and you followed for six months the negotiations to forming new coalition. Have you faced these kind of negotiations in live stream? How many journalists were uh, uh, covering the negotiations between Ms. Merkel with Free Democrats or Social Democrats or how many? Have you even, even We're talking so about what goes let, on in let's, Armenia. Let's keep, no, no, no. Let's, let's, let's we, keep it to we, Armenia, we try, shall we? we? Try to, That's no, the exactly. purpose of the interview. No, you want, agreed to answer questions want, on Armenia. Exactly, but I want to compare the situation with the, at least with the European political culture because Armenia uh, wants to become more democratic country and more European by essence. So we can't neglect European experience. You can't say that you could have a round of political negotiations just in front of the camera having a live stream because it's impossible. You can have statements in front of the camera. You can have live stream when you are delivering press conference, but not negotiations. Mr. Mr. Yes. after all these years in power, Yes. You have your, you've built up an enormous network of patronage with a, an elite that is still feasting off the massive corruption that your party embedded. Too many oligarchs, too many vested interests, too many people with too much to lose. Are, you, are these people going to it's stop very, very controlling this very society question. the way if, you've allowed them to when do? I come, if you allow me to come back to the first question you pose, why it happens? For sure we had uh, fortunately, we, have, we had a background of the problems not solved and fixed finally. I mean, corruption, migration, level of poverty. But Armenian indices and uh, indicatives were not so bad. If you compare with... Uh, They're getting worse. If you, if you, no, not true. This year's annual report by Freedom you, House says your corruption me. rating if has you, dropped. If you compare the situation in Armenia with so-called associated countries like Ukraine, Georgia and Moldova, in all fields, Armenian incentives were quite high were quite high even in comparison with the countries who are Europeanly associated already. So despite we had many challenges and the new government will continue to face these challenges. So uh, the, problem Mr. Exists, Ashutian, the problems existing in Armenian politics will remain until the new government should uh, face the expectations, the raised expectations of the people and I do want them to succeed because otherwise it will be another failure and another 
vicious circle for Armenian political life. According to Freedom House, you have contributed massively to this corruption. They said because you've solidified systemic corruption, they accuse your party of consolidating power over the executive, legislative, and judicial branches and say you weren't prepared to act against high-level abuse. Referred, In other words, can referred. I just finish the question? Yeah. Okay. I let you finish the answer. Okay. In other words, you let the powerful get away with abusing the system. That's the view of Freedom House. Freedom House, with all my respect to non-government and transnational organizations, after parliamentary elections in 2017, we got quite positive statements from the uh, Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe Parliamentary Assembly, from European Parliament, from the Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly about the recent elections. So please, if you refer to any kind of source of information, in this case, very specific transnational NGO, uh, put at the same time the quotations from the internationally recognized political organizations responsible for the election observation. Well, they said we, we have corruption in Armenia. And, and, you have, and you have massive vote buying as well. Uh, I want to remind you the main idea of the all final statements after parliamentary elections we had that the, finally, despite all the problems uh, registered during the voting, the political will of the Armenian people has been reflected during the voting and as a result of this voting. Really? Please, fine, exactly. Freedom House said last year that I there were widespread I reports recall. of major violations in your 2017 heard, elections, Sebastian. which you say were great. Yeah. Which you, you say you could continue free to of corruption. I, I never said it was great. No? I said it. I said that it was free of corruption. Mr. Ashot, yes. yes, I know you'd like to clean up your record, but one of your party representatives... Clean up, nothing. I, I'm just expressing really? myself. No. Systemic corruption, that was the view. One of your party... Admitting, admitting our uh, part of the responsibility for that. One of your party representatives, a lady called Hamin Nagdalian, was actually quoted on the subject of vote buying just before those 2017 elections. She was giving it a green light. There's a fantastic quote. She said, anyone who wants to give electoral bribes is just doing charity. Whoever wants to give an electoral bribe, let them give it. And whoever wants to take an electoral bribe, let them take it. I'm quite and surprised at the quotation, but if you talk about another proud moment for your party, if you are talking about the vote buying, etc., please consider the records of that time, uh, statements and, uh, and observations. But it's not only Republican Party of Armenia were accused in the actions like this. And finally, to end up the question. Oh, does that the make it okay? Because other just, people were doing it. Just to remind it. again. Does that make it okay? Just, not at all. Just to remind mm -hmm. you the final statement that the political will of Armenian people has been expressed in the final results of this voting. Freedom House reported on employees uh, you, being you, openly you pressured like Freedom House. in their place like of work. House. Well, and, and other human rights organizations as well. Can I give you an example? Exactly. It reported it, on employees being openly pressured in their place of work to vote for your party. Example they gave of a staff meeting at a major supermarket group in which employees were ordered to secure votes for the company's owner, who just happened to be a member of your party, and they were threatened with dismissal if they didn't secure those votes. So the conclusion is that your party have been acting like bullies to try and get votes. You finish? Do you deny that? No, we don't deny the facts that existed. We don't deny the evidences, but we don't agree with You were with 10 that. years in power and you're still Allow bullying me. people to Mr. vote Se for you. Mr. Sebastian, let me answer. You are so impatient. You were a part of demonstrations? Let me come back to the answer. So. Next time. <laughs> Next time. No, I do hope the new government will be a uh, saint one, so we will have no problems in Armenia. That, that's, that's why I, when I you asked come, your come, party, I will come. I will when, come, when you asked I will your party back. to vote for Mr. Pashanyan, they, they, they didn't. Let me let me consider what you posed in your previous question. So, uh, if we you want really to understand the political processes in Armenia, you should take into account the necessity uh, and the endeavor to have a holistic picture. You can't take the facts and the assessment that you want to cite and say about. If, if that's Armenia, an easy way if, of spinning it, Mr. Armenia, Ashotian. That's Armenia, an easy way of trying exactly, to exactly. spin your way Sorry out me. of a difficult Sorry situation. If Armenian new authorities were not legitimate, why European Union signed new comprehensive enhanced partnership agreement with Armenian President Sarsakyan? In the hope that you would improve.
That was the when it was in the hope. When it was December, last November, year. November, November, just last year, in six the hope months that after elections. So yeah. not true. Not true. So this there's been no improvement this, since this then. This consideration is not true because we had no elections after. You can't say that there's a hole because they we were had hoping not. that you would improve after the agreement had been signed. Exactly. There's and been no and sign what, that and you what had happened to. after that, from November, what we did, what what was the mistake or. You where, clung where on you? to power as long as you could when it was apparent that the people no longer wanted you there. Did anybody believe that the, this mass mobilization will happen? Nobody. No, well, it you did. can't find. No. Well, when I did. say nobody except Nikol Pashinyan and his, in, his inner circle, maybe. It's not the right way to say now uh, by the. Uh, irony face that you know that everything was bad and in Armenia you had many problems and this revolution was irrevocable. Nobody believed in that, even in, its, in his political bloc, okay, I Mr. mean Mr. Pashinyan. So it Mr. was Ashutin. unexpected. Even the international media from the very beginning was saying that such kind of developments in Armenia were quite unexpected. Mr. Ashotian. Yes, it, Mr. Sebastian. It did happen. It the, happened. A kind of revolution did happen, which has been very closely watched by your closest ally, Russia. You saw how the Kremlin enforced what they see as their sphere of influence in Ukraine and Crimea. Are you worried that the same thing could happen to you here? We never said, we never put the parallels with Ukraine, Crimea and any other countries. The only thing that is, by the way, quite common in Armenian political field and Mr. Pashinyan also shared this position that Russia should remain our strategic partner. Please find the quotation of him saying that from the parliamentary But chair. where are the limits so that Russia has set for you? Where are the limits? Russia never put the limits. If you are thinking about any kind of limits, uh, please ask new government why the position of uh, Mr. Pashinyan has been so drastically changed in six months six months when his, he was a main uh, reporter for the arm exit, Armenian exit from the Eurasian Economic Union proposals in the parliament, in the committee of the foreign affairs, by the way, where I am chairing. So, and what has happened during six months that Mr. Pashinyan has so dramatically changed his old position? What are the reasons behind? So you're, not, a, you're not afraid of Russia? Why we should be afraid of Russia? Don't treat Armenia according when you, to When the you look at what happens and has happened so often to opponents frankly of the speaking, Kremlin. Frankly speaking, we are more afraid from Turkey. And this is historical memory. You Turkey can't doesn't understand. have two military you bases can't. in your country. Russia, Turkey does. Has Russia has two military bases in your country. Turkey, are they here for Turkey, decoration? Turkey has implemented a genocide against Armenia, Armenians and Armenia as a country. It's a territory. Don't forget about that. If you look at the geography, when if you want to threaten Armenians by Russia, if somebody wants to do it, it's strange because we have Turkey next to us. And none of European countries were able to protect the Republic of Armenia up to now from the blockade implemented by Turkey, from the militaristic rhetoric of President Erdogan. Can you, could you find any reference that any European leaders was successful or uh, open enough to accuse Erdogan in his military rhetoric, in his... I don't uh, want to take it all the way uh, into this, Turkey, uh, but if, because, if you want because to we're, running, about we're running out of time. Mr. You Ashutin. can't avoid taking in mind the Armenian genocide. You can't avoid Ashutin, other security challenges I know challenges you'd like to go have. back and well, let's talk about it's history. Back. But it's I'm, not let's back. Talk, it's let's a, it's talk a presence. About the future. It's let's talk presence. about the future. It's a presence. It's Mr. not back. Ashutin, let's talk about the let's. future. Are you going to assist the new government? Are you going to admit that your party has failed? And are you going to help constructively the new one to make progress, to battle against corruption, to battle against vote buying, all the things that you promised to do and, and never did? Not true. We, we did. We did. And you can't avoid to, of recording of the progress in the Armenian electoral system. You can't avoid it. So we stipulated very clearly that we had two criteria for the supporting or assisting a new government formation and prime minister election. Uh, end of civil disobedience, it happened at the moment. 
and a second, uh, enough signature to overcome the threshold uh, necessary for the nomination. Mr. Pashinyan did it. So I think that uh, our, our Republican Party of Armenia will assist the election of the new Prime Minister because the Armenia is in the situation where it's better to have any Prime Minister and any government than haven't at all. So it's very clear that the Republican Party of Armenia has a huge experience, uh, knowledge, and instead is quite institutionalized and strong. By the way, we kept our unity. We kept our unity by voting against for the first stage. Uh, we showed to the, our opponents that the Republican Party of Armenia is quite united and quite strong to be one of the major stakeholders All in right. Armenian political life. We've, we've run out of time. Arman Ashotian, been good to have you on conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.